We're going to talk a little bit about a brand new topic that we have not discussed in this class before, and that's the topic of heaps. I've always felt that heaps were kind of an underrated data structure, and hopefully by the time this mini lesson on the introduction of heaps is over, you will agree with me that they're a powerful data structure to add to your bailiwick. Uh, so let's look at an array here like this and ask ourselves, why do people like arrays? What's good about them? Please. There's something really good about arrays. What is it? Mr. Nikita, what do you like about arrays, sir? Indexes, yes, they have indexes like 0, 3, 4. But when you use an array in a, in a code example, what are, the, what are the good things about it? There's one thing in particular that really stands out. Ben, what do you think? Random access. Random access. What is... If you're going to explain to a six-year-old the advantages of random access, how would you describe it, Ben? So no matter where you want to look in the array, it's a fixed amount of time, and it's a short fixed amount of time. So an array, if we're going to use a single word to describe its behavior, it's fast. It's fast. Now, let's look at this. I was in the middle of drawing this binary search tree, and then my smart board kind of died. I hope it's not permanent. Uh, but in any case, uh, what do we gain and what do we lose by moving away from the array towards a tree instead? What is the main advantage? What's the main disadvantage? Okay, what do we gain? What do we lose? What is it that we lose? We lost random access. Now we have to traverse the tree, right? We have to come over here and then like, try to figure out where we're going to go, etc. It's still not too bad because if we keep the tree well balanced, it becomes a log n thing, but it's more painful than before. We could just say, give me the fourth item, it will give you the fourth item. What do we gain when we move to the tree? Look, we've moved from a linear structure to a two-dimensional structure. We get some benefit from that. What was the main benefit? Yes, sir? We can find things quicker because here you can see we'd have to do either a linear search or we'd have to keep the arrays uh, sorted. That would be expensive also from a computational standpoint. But here, in a binary search tree, we can add stuff, delete stuff, and look up stuff in log n time instead of linear time. We would be for the find portion, but then when you add new stuff, you're going to have to take the stuff that is in the array and move it over and shift it over to insert the new thing. So that's where you would pay the price there if you stored it in an array. So I think it's clear then that there are some things that are good about the array and some things that are better about the tree. Have you ever asked yourself, is it possible to store a tree inside an array so that we could get the best of both worlds? Now it turns out that we can do this, but we have to make a certain compromise on the array, or I should say on the tree. We can only store complete trees inside of an array. Now, the complete tree is a definition that I gave you months ago, and I'm guessing most of you don't remember. But see if you can talk to your partner and figure out what does it mean to have a complete tree. So looking at this particular tree, is it complete? What do you think? Mr. Alejandro, do you really think that tree is complete? It is. How about this one, sir? Is that one complete? Who can tell me? Mr. Franovic? It is. It's complete. How about this one? What do you think here? Mr. Mariak, what do you think, sir? It is not. Sir, tell me why this tree is complete and this one is not complete. So when we add stuff, we either have to add it uh, to a new level if all the levels are uh, uh, taken up. In this case, if we wanted to add one here, but we have to add from the farthest left possible. That was part of our definition of a complete tree. And if we agree that the tree that we're going to keep is going to be complete, then it is possible to store a tree in an array. And once you have that, you get all the speed advantages of the array, but you get all the advantages, or most of the advantages, I should say, of keeping a tree. And that is essentially what a heap is. It's a two-dimensional tree structure that's stored in a one-dimensional array. Hopefully, I've whet your appetite for what this is. Now, to try and understand a heap, it is not the same thing as a binary search tree that we've looked at before. It doesn't have quite the same features as the binary search tree. It's a much simpler set of features. But a lot of times, that simpler set of features is good enough for what we want. And if what we want is a priority queue, the, the heap is the perfect data structure to implement a priority queue. In fact, it's so good that 99% of all priority queues are built using a heap. 
I will show you how the heap is constructed, the next class we have together, all the advantages and disadvantages of it. I will show you some videos that describe the heap in much more detail. I just wanted to introduce the concept right now.